Hey guys, what's up? Ferdy here. Wanted to make a video today concerning guild applications, specifically how to write one because so many people these days are just making like the most terrible, poorly written, hot messes of garbage I've ever seen in my entire life. I think it's really important that you look at your application as like a baited hook, right? Your application is the gateway to the interview and the interview is the gateway to the trial. So I mean, this is just the beginning of a process that potentially might land you a place in a brand new community. And I guess what that means is that what you write in the app isn't that important. Like it doesn't have to be a life history. What it needs to be is sexy as hell so that people look at it and they say, hey man, I actually want to interview this guy. I want to talk to this guy. I mean, he's obviously written something that's real real nice and uh, this this is worth talking to. You know, this guy is worth taking a second look at. So there are some major things that every single guild is going to look at when you uh, when you apply. And they are really easy to get right, so make sure that you do get them right. Because there are a lot of people who don't, even though they're like the easiest boxes to tick. You know, for starters, make sure your armory is all set up super nice. You know, if you're gemming, if your best stat is haste, make sure your, all your gem slots have haste gems. Make sure your enchants have haste. And uh, if you are gemming multi-strike but enchanting crit, and you're doing that because you're you know you're hitting a certain crit cap and after that crit cap multi strike is better than crit make sure you include a little provisio that says i am doing this because because someone's going to look at that and they're going to see that inconsistency and if you don't include you know a little disclaimer they're probably going to think you're an idiot but if you do include that extra information saying hey the reason i'm doing this is to hit my 2100 haste cap and after that, I'm going multi-strike because it gives me additional damage during the, you know, the bloodlust phase of the fight. They're going to be like, dude, this guy is pretty smart. You know, he, know, he knows what he's talking about. So if there is something that you need to clarify, an oddity that would otherwise be confusing to the reader of the app, make sure you do clarify it because it gives you an opportunity to flex your knowledge muscles a little bit and potentially impress the guy that's taking a peek at, at your application. After the armory, most guilds are going to ask you to include Warcraft logs parses. Um, make sure that the logs that you include are representative of your true skill. So if you're, you know, a fairly solid player, but you have some logs that are really, really bad because, you know, maybe your gear was bad, or maybe you were doing a strategy that was inferior, or maybe you were doing a job that involved lots of, you know, running around and not that much hitting the boss, you need to either not include those logs, or again, include a disclaimer saying, I was doing a job during this fight, you know, I was doing something for my guild, I was soaking this mechanic, and you can see that in the log if you look closely, and that's the reason my damage is lower than expected. But ultimately, you should include logs that see you in a good light, and I just want to say that a lot of guilds, especially higher-end guilds, will look at more specific things, like not just your damage, but when you died on this fight, did you use a healing tonic right before you died? Did you use a personal cooldown? You know, if you're a tank, did you use your shield wall? You know, is your cooldown, uh, your three minute cooldown, your shield wall, did you use this three times in a 10 minute fight or did you only use it once? Why was it sitting off cooldown for five minutes? And so on and so forth. So make sure that these little uh, more specific things are ticked off as well because this is definitely something the higher end players are going to look at and it's very important that you're aware that they're going to look at it. One thing I'm going to talk a lot about in this video is the psychology of the application. You may not realize it, but every time someone's reading your response, they're they're basically judging you, right? They've never met you, they've never played with you, they never talked to you. And when they read your application, every response you have is a little little bit of insight into what kind of person you are, even if it's not 100% accurate. Maybe you wrote it in a rush, maybe you wrote it when you were tired. And that's why it's important that you get all these answers as accurate and as well written as possible because these people are judging you the people reading your app so when you have a question for example what class and spec are you if you're a dps warrior if you play fury and arms warrior don't put down arms warrior don't put down fury warrior that makes you look like you can only play one class or spec you know if you play mage don't put frost mage just put dps mage or just put mage better off now and if you play paladin and you only play retribution put retribution paladin if you play warrior but you only play dps put dps warrior be specific about what you play but if you're playing a pure dps class it is expected that you're going to play all three specs so if you're joining a mythic guild and you're a warlock don't put aflock 
put Warlock because they're going to expect you to be able to play all three specs. That's just another thing where even if even if it's this class and spec, like understand that if you do put a specific spec for a class that has multiple specs in the role that you play, people are probably going to look at it as you not only being able to play that spec. Even again, even if that's a micro judgment, just be aware that people will see it that way. Uh, when you include your armory link, make sure you include the link to your advanced armory. It's very simple. You just click advanced at the top right of the armory. That shows all your gem sockets, the eye level of your pieces, as well as the enchants. And also, when you include a link to the screenshot of your UI, I recommend that you use imgur.com. Do not use a piece of garbage image host. It actually triggers the reader a lot when you use this like dog shit host like Tiny Pick or Photo Bucket and it's resized to be a 480 by 360p image. Like use Imgur. That's what the reader wants. They want a full size screenshot that they can, you know, analyze where your key bindings are, where your raid frames are, what weak auras you're using. Also make sure that when you include a screenshot you're in raid combat, like you're fighting a boss, even if it's an LFR boss, because what the uh, reader wants to see is when you're in combat, you know, where are your boss timers? Where are your raid frames? Where are your weak auras or power auras or tell me when? You know, where is all that aura tracking? Where is your health bar? You know, where is, what do your keybinds look like in combat? What hidden bars do you have? You know, like all that stuff, anything that's different in combat, which is usually a lot for raiding UIs, they want to see that during a boss. So don't take a screenshot of you AFK in your garrison, take a screenshot of you fighting a boss. Now, most people think that the raid history question is really important. Honestly, this question is just a box tick. It's very irrelevant. Most people are going to look at it and see if you've been in any notable guilds. But if you say, hey, I raided tier 15 with Guardians of Honor, guess what? No one knows who that guild is and no one really cares. So, I mean, this is really just you ticking all the boxes saying I was this world rank or I cleared this many bosses. If, you know, if your world rank isn't pertinent, then just include I was 12 out of 13 in this tier or so on and so forth. And uh, don't go into too much detail. I honestly only include either super notable achievements, like I was world first in this tier, for example, or I only include stuff from the most recent x packs. So you can see in this example question I've put, you know, I was this in Missa Pandaria, and I was this in Warlords, and I opened with the Warlords information, because a lot of guilds that are recruiting people for the current tier, they're going to say, hey, I killed Archimonde recently. How did you do on Archimonde? I killed Blackhand pretty recently. How did you do on Blackhand? They're going to compare the most recent achievements that you have, how well you're doing in the game, because honestly, no one cares how well or how poorly you did in Burning Crusade. They're not going to want to hear that you were semi-casual when you killed Warlord, you know, Vash, but then when you were doing the chess event in Karazhan, you were very hardcore, but, you know, suddenly you had a minor health crisis when Illidan Stormwage was... Like, honestly, no one gives a shit. They just want to know about your current raid history. So unless you have something extremely extremely impressive to furnish them with from past expansions just to include the the more current events if you can play multiple classes or specializations even in lower guilds this is an attractive prospect so if you're someone that says hey you know what i know i play warrior i see your guild has two warriors guess what i can play death knight too uh, i see you have no death knights so if you need me to do that i can do that you know that's something that a lot of guilds are going to look at and they're going to give you a thumbs up um, not necessary but make sure to highlight your strengths you know if you have something that can you know be brought to the table that other players can't something that makes you more flexible that makes you more valuable at the end of the day so make sure you do include that if it's something that that you can do now you can see in our question here we ask if you've played any other games at a high level but honestly if you've done anything else at an exceptionally high level make sure to include it in your app even if it's not relevant for example, if you're a varsity football player, find a way to highlight virtues that you have in the game through that example by saying, hey, you know, I was a varsity football player. I know how to buckle down and play for the team. Like, find a way to take things that you're good at from the re other aspects of your life and highlight the virtues that you have within the game. Contrary to popular belief, the last questions on the app are usually the most important or at least the most revealing. You know, why do you want to join the guild? Why should we pick you? These questions, even tell me about yourself. These, these three questions, usually the big ones. Most people think it's the guild history or the, the Warcraft logs. That stuff's important, but that's really just boxes. Like, people expect that your shit's going to be solid, right? Like, if it's not, then you just fail right away. But when you're doing good on the app, you know, when you pass the armory, you pass the Warcraft logs, they're going to look, hey, 
What is this guy all about? And these are the questions that reveal the most about you as a person and as a player. Make sure you answer these honestly and in detail. They don't have to be long, but they do have to be specific. Clarity is really important on these questions, especially questions every so often you'll see one like, why did you leave your last guild? Do not be ambiguous. If you failed your trial, say, I failed my trial. Maybe say, this is why. Try not to put in like a, a flimsy excuse, but honestly, like people are going to find out no matter what. So just always be honest on these questions because it really highlights the kind of individual you are when you try and lie on your app. For example, when I left Duality at the beginning of Warlords of Draenor, I just said, you know what, there were some individuals in this guild. I really didn't get along with them. The rate of atmosphere was really negative. I felt like I couldn't continue in the guild because the leadership was extremely weak. We were often butting heads and I didn't work well in this guild because they were inexperienced and I thought I was better than them and I left because I couldn't deal with them anymore. And so that doesn't paint me in the best light, but it does paint me as honest. And it also, you know, it shows there was a problem on both sides. So if you do have to leave a guild for a reason that isn't like, you know, the guild fell apart basically make sure you're at least honest about that reason because there is a there is an upside to that now i am going to get a little bit meta here but psychology with regards to applications is really important and the subconscious effect that reading an application has on the reader phrases you really want to avoid in your app i think i believe i want to take my first steps i just came back after a long break these are four of the big ones you don't want to say ever. Don't say, I think I could be helpful. Say, I will be helpful if you give me the chance. Don't say, I believe I could be an asset. Say, I will be an asset and here's why. Don't say, I want to take my first steps into hardcore rating. Say, I'm ready to make my mark or, you know, you can be a little bit melodramatic with it. But ultimately, like, don't be hesitant because it comes across as you being uncertain or not confident in your ability. You want to make the reader inspired by your confidence. But at the same time, when you, when you frame your application, not only do you want to make yourself come across in a positive light, but you also want to make the person reading it feel good about themselves and their guild. Never imply their guild is a stepping stone. Like when you say, I want to take my first steps in hardcore rating by joining your guild or something, that, that creates the subconscious perception that you're using their guild as a stepping stone, that like their guild, your first steps, the very first place you want to look to get into hardcore rating is their guild, which makes them feel like their guild's not very good. And they're going to immediately have a sour taste, even if they don't know why, like even if they don't make this connection of the dots in their head. So always avoid phrases like that because they trigger really negative responses to the reader. Instead, you know, be confident. Like I said, you know, say I will be an asset. Here's why, you know, I'm a very competitive individual. I want to raid with like-minded people who are just as good. I want to raid with people that I can respect and look up to, you know, make the readers feel good about themselves while inspiring confidence in your application. Going through my example application one more time in a little bit greater detail, you know, this whole name, age, battle tag, you know, include whatever you want. You can go into as much or as little detail as you want. I mean, this is all formalities, pretty much. As I said on the class and spec, just make sure that you're specific. If you play DPS, make sure that you cover all the specs. You know, if you play healer, include that you only play healer and so on and so forth. Make sure you link to the advanced armory. Very easy to do. Uh, if you can include a video as well as your a screenshot of your UI, people like to be able to see you actually play. And especially if you're confident in your play in the video, like if you're confident enough to disclose that video, definitely do so. Um, people will always ask, can you rate our hours? I mean, it's a simple yes, no, you don't have to include any more than that. When you do rate history, I like to format it at least with some bullet points or something. So it's a little bit easier to process. Other than that, I would not bother, um, wouldn't bother going into great detail in the paragraph, like just include the placement, the guild you were in, and then include a little paragraph after, you know, I've said, I have, a, I have a great history of rating. I uh, can provide a more complete rate history if you want to know about what I did in previous expansions, but I honestly assume that you don't care, so I didn't include it. It's basically the implication. Uh, in the past, I often take on a little bit more responsibility. You know, like I like to look through apps, I like to respond to apps. I like to create strategies in the PTR. Um, sometimes I do some social media stuff. I've worked on videos for guilds in the past. 
and uh, you know I've done some raid leading every so often I'll call it mechanics like on Archimond I always call it the dance pattern you know I, I like to take on responsibility I relish that responsibility and that's something that you definitely want to include if it's something that you've done you know if you've if you've written an add-on for a guild definitely include that like if you've done a spreadsheet for a guild include that people want these tertiary skills you're more valuable than just your skills as a player if you bring something extra to the table that's something that's valuable to the guild um now in this next question you know not every guild's going to ask if you can re-roll i did talk about this earlier in the video but definitely include if you're a flexible player definitely highlight that i mean anytime you have a virtue anytime you have something positive in your favor highlight it you know i can play multiple classes you know if you need me to play multiple classes i will do that it's very rare like if you play if you're applying to a, a semi-hardcore guild as a warlock and they want to accept you they'll probably accept you as a warlock but if they think that you have this big skill set i mean you definitely have to be able to back it up i'm not saying like lie about this shit but if if you have this huge skill set uh, that you've highlighted, like they see you as so much more of a catch, right? Even if you never end up playing another class, but definitely highlight any virtues you have. You might not have this question specifically, but find a place to put it in the app if you can play multiple things. Um, if you've, like I said, if you've done other stuff at a high level, include that. And again, find the way to tie it to virtues. When they ask you when you want to join the guild, as you, as I've said here, you know my main pursuits world first. World of Warcraft's one of the best uh, outlets to occupy my competitive nature. And, uh, you know, I've, I've constantly been within the world top five, top ten, but I've never been world first. And I think that Serenity is the ideal proving ground for me. And it's filled with like-minded individuals who not only I respect, but I think they have the same passion to succeed. They have the same passion for excellence. Uh, I'm an individual that prizes, you know, supremacy pretty much above everything else. You know, my passion is being good at things. My passion is beating other people. And I think that other people share this in this environment. And therefore, I belong here. Why should we pick you? Well, you know, I've already said a little bit up here, but you do want to reiterate. You want to hammer home that point. You don't want to use redundancy. Don't use the same sentences. Don't use the same phrases. Come up with something a little bit new, but with the same spirit. So I've said, you know, um, I've, you know, reference wise that you always want to include good references. I've played with all the members of your guild. Uh, you know, if you haven't played with anyone in the guilds, you, know, you speak with my current guild master. That's why you don't want to burn bridges with your old guilds, by the way. You want to have references like speak with my old guild master, speak with my officers, speak with these raiders, so on and so forth. And uh, also, I bring over uh, 10 years of, of raid experience, you know, leadership skills, strategical knowledge, and my attitude. Um, I'm definitely going to be a huge, a huge asset to your team, and I will prove that if you give me the chance. Uh, I learn new things quickly. You know, just again highlight your virtues and do it in a way that not only inspires confidence in your app, but it's also fluid. Like it, it makes sense within the application. It's not just like hey, I am a good player, but I've done it in a way that makes sense and looks good and isn't long. I mean, the one thing you can see looking at my example app of Artorius Pendragon, the one thing you can see about my app is it's not extraordinarily lengthy. It's very clear and concise. Clarity is the most important thing. You know, every time I, every time I've answered a question here, it's been in about a paragraph or less. So, you know, my raid history, quick, quick bullet points of recent raid history, one paragraph, you know, this is my, my officer capacity. This is stuff that I like to do for guilds. I like to read apps. I like to do interviews, you know, very quick bullet points. But also, it's flowery enough, like the prose is flowery enough that it looks intelligent. Same thing with this, you know, one paragraph. I also, you know, I said I can play pretty much every DPS. I can play tanks well. I won't play healer. Simple. Gets the point across. Never more than one or two paragraphs. You don't want to include one sentence. People will flip out. They won't even read your app. It's going to be garbage. People don't want to read something that you haven't put effort in. It shows that you don't give a shit and um, shows that you don't care about your application. But you know, what? people want to read even less than one sentence applications. They don't want to read an essay because when I, when someone looks at my app, when Potom goes and looks at my app here and he says, Hey, Kuznam, you know, we should take a second look at this app or, Hey, you know, other guys in the guild, look at this app. You know what they don't want to read? When you tell 19 people to take a look at this app, should we accept this guy? I can guarantee you that multiple people in the guild are not going to read an app that has three or four or five paragraphs responses to each question. 
What they will read is something that has a nice juicy hook at the beginning, nice UI, nice rate history layout. Okay, one paragraph down here. All right, you know, he used to play these games at a high level. All right, you know, he wants to be world first. This is why. They will definitely read that. Finally, one of my main recommendations is that you do your application in a notepad file or a Word file. Something beforehand where you can save it, improve upon it, edit it, proofread it. Potentially recycle it if you are declined or you want to apply to a new guild in the future. Somewhere where you can kind of have this um, brainstorm of different ideas and paragraphs and stuff that you can basically just continue to improve. There's too many people that they see a guild and they write their app in one hour, one night, you know, they instantly submit it. It's like, take some time to give a shit about this. I mean, this is potentially your new guild, right? Like, this, these are people that you could spend months playing with. And uh, your application should definitely reflect like how much you care about getting into the guild. Even if it's a lot of work and you end up getting declined, it's definitely something that you can reuse or edit later on for a new guild. And it's important that you do take time to create something that shows that you not only care, but that you are valuable. And it's, like I said, the psychology of apps is very, very strange. But if you create something that, that shows you're an intelligent individual, like there, people are going to judge you. Every time they read one of your responses, they're making little micro judgments about you already. They haven't played with you. They never talked with you. They're already judging you, though. So when you think of it that way, it's really every, every word counts. Like every way you phrase something, every way that you uh, respond to a question, you know, do you write too much, too little? People are already making judgments about you, even though they've never even spoken with you. So just remember that. Remember that when you're reading your app, you're being judged, you're being subconsciously judged by a lot of people. And when the time they read their app and they go to respond, yes, no, or what do I think? Or how do you do this? You want them to have a smile on their face. You want them to think like, all right, this guy's got potential or this girl's got potential. Like that's what you want them thinking. Anyways, guys, I tried my very best to keep this video short. I hoped I would have it under 10 minutes. No matter how many times I recorded this and re-recorded this and re-recorded this and re-recorded this, I honestly couldn't get it under 20 minutes. Like, I just kept going on no matter what. And I think it's important, honestly, that I tell it in the most detail that I can. If you have any questions or you need me to make a follow-up video, please say so in the comments. We'll definitely, most definitely, t find some time to make more content on this because I think that this is really important. I get a lot of questions about it. And if you did find it helpful, I would appreciate it if you shared it because this is something that I get so many questions about and so many people ask so many other people about it. And it would be great if we could see some great apps, more great apps on more great guilds. Thank you guys so much. Take it easy. And I will see you guys on the flip side.